Welcome to River Crossing Guest House and Trees Bank Apries. This is at the site of the old Trees Bank Ferry. There's a, a cairn and a river crossing, uh, a view of a bend in the river from the guest house. Fork in the roads here in the forest we call the point because the river goes on two sides making a triangle of land that uh, used to be pasture. My uh, father John Clark takes care of mowing these paths and we have a few picnic sites out here. The first one is at a cliff looking over the river and on the other side of the river there are other paths that uh, we like. I just wanted to tell you the story about uh, the Trees Bank fur trade sites that are on the other side of the river down towards our neighbor's place and past the uh, Assiniboine Bridge on the 340. Uh, my uh, godmother who just passed away, Alice Brown, documented these Trees Bank fur trade sites and uh, it's very interesting. She's, she put a booklet together that showed the locations and they're not very well known. Not many people visit those sites. Sometimes people come along with a metal detector and look for old buttons and stuff. So this trail that my dad pushed through with the bulldozer on the other side of the river, he was clearing out an old road, and it goes almost all the way up to one of those fur trade sites. Plus on the other side of the river, you can still see uh, wagon ruts left in the prairie by the old uh, pemmican trails. I think it was called the Yellow Quill Trail, where you see those ruts. There's also a, a really good lookout point on the other side of the river uh, over the mouth of the Surus where it meets the Assiniboine. And it's quite natural over there and undisturbed. This is a hive that I put on a scale. And I usually, uh, every night I check the weight. So it kind of tells me a general idea how much nectar is coming in uh, daily. And then overnight they'll evaporate the water so it'll go back to negative. And then uh, another day comes by and they start bringing in more nectar. So it goes up and down, up and down. Hopefully it keeps on climbing. And that's another hive. That's a small nook I started this year. And I put her in a, in another, um, a normal uh, box. There's usually about 10 frames in here. And I usually put her, the queen lives in these two boxes and these are all the honey boxes above it. Some, sometimes we have an excluder that keeps the queen down so she can't come up. And then we could, she could actually live in one box or something. But. So this is, I come here every night and I measure the weight and see what... And right now everything is kind of finished in this area. It's not unknown of 18 pounds a day, 20 pounds a day. That's quite... Uh, and if you zoom in here, you could see some pollen coming in once in a while. See that bee? That, that one... There's one coming in with yellow oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. there. And they're going in and out, in and out, and there's the, um, the, um, there's, every bee has their role. Some bees are defending the entrance, and then they uh, progress to become foragers. So this is capped honey, and this is not actually capped yet, so th there's some honey, uh, but there's some other frames that are more capped than others. they were starting it. Once it's capped, the bees, uh, it, it has a certain percentage of humidity that is acceptable and they, they cap it. So this is, this could be, actually be honey too, but they're still uh, waiting to put more uh, honey in it. Or, uh, but it could also be just nectar and they're waiting to evaporate it, get the water out of it, and once it's at the right percentage, they start capping it. This is an um, extracting facility. You have three people working on it. This machine takes the capping. I'm gonna find a one that one of the capping stuff there. So this machine actually takes the capping off this. If, if you look at down there. permits the honey to uh, start dripping out. And you get a whole roll of uh, honey that's just dripping. And this is 
making it track traction. It's spinning. I can't open it because uh, it's in your feet before so uh, And then this position, they put it back in the box and those are going to go back into, uh, onto the hives. So we re uh, pull off the honey, put them there and I bring them back in the yards. This is a plastic foundation. And see, I don't know if you could see, but the bees started to to uh, make a wax here and then they just put a bit of honey here. So this is um, a plastic foundation. It, it kind of gives them a, a pattern to uh, actually build a wax, um, regular wax. Uh, otherwise, without this, sometimes it's not too, um, well, also it's, uh, it's strong and it could it could withhold um, the centrifugal force when it flip, turns around like it goes like this way. So without this foundation, uh, they would do odd patterns and it just gives it strength too. For, um, once the honey is cleared from wax and debris, it, it comes into this tank and it's just holding uh, till I barrel it later on tonight. You probably want to shut. So I try to separate them each time I, I extract the honey just to get a different... Because um, I, I get paid more for the white than darker honey. And then uh, there's, I also have uh, the humidity associated to every lot number. Thanks for visiting River Crossing Guest House and Trees Bank Apries. I hope you guys can come out and see us on September 16th for Open Farm Day. I'll be serving some honey, lemon, iced tea, and lemonade. And we'll be selling a honey by the pail, candles, and I'll have a children's activity center with the bee theme. If you're interested in booking our guest house, you'd be all alone in the forest here. Uh, our website is www.rivercrossing.ca.